many of us were out here uh, about this time last year for the uh, for the rededication of the uh, Causeway Memorial Park. And if you may recall, it was unseasonably warm and beautiful and sunny. And I went back and I looked at the very first meeting that was held here to dedicate this park back in 1934 on November 11th. And it said in the Chronicle that that day was unseasonably warm and sunny. And so here we are today. Take a look. This is, this is absolutely gorgeous and unseasonably warm. And many of you know, many of you know Lupe Alviar. And uh, Lupe was saying, I spoke last year. And he said, you brought all this warm weather. We're going to have you come back every year because you bring the sunshine and the warmth. And I have to say that that's really not true, Lupe. Um, this is clear evidence, I think, that God just loves veterans. <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting for the applause line there. Okay, so the very first time people gathered here uh, was in 1934. Now for 76 years, over good times and bad, we have continued to gather and to honor our veterans. Originally, this park was just to, just to honor the uh, veterans of World War I. But of course, over the years, we've added monuments for um, those of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and of course, we know that we're still losing service men and women today in Iraq and especially in Afghanistan. And it doesn't look like we'll ever run out of fallen heroes. It's a never-ending story, I think, of dedication, of bravery, and unfortunately, of loss. You know, we've just come through um, another election. And our fighting men and women are not political. At least, they're not supposed to be. The point is that our soldiers and sailors, our airmen, marines, go where they're told to go. They do what they're told to do and try to achieve the results that we've determined are in the best interest of the United States. Good soldiers don't make policy. They follow orders. They do what their country asks them to do. It's always been that way, and our country is designed to have military support their country and those at home, and basically to keep us safe. When I was in Vietnam in 1968, the country was rife with corruption, indecision, I would say lack of will, really. And as I looked around, the thing that gave me strength was knowing that in a matter of a few months, I was going home. I was going to my home where I hoped to return, where there was still the American dream. At home, I knew that there was stability, a fully functional representative government, peace and prosperity, and very honestly, like most of you, I think, I longed to get back there as soon as I could. Major Tron in the uh, Arvin, uh, the Vietnamese Army, who was my counterpart, worked with me every day in my duties in producing newsreels, documentaries for Saigon Television, and we worked together and helped each other with translations and editing. When I came home in January of 1969, Major Tron sent me two or three pleading letters. He was asking me to find a way, begging me to find a way to take his children and bring them to the United States where they could have a good and a safe life. He had bought into the American dream in a big way. It still, it still bothers me. I still feel pangs of knowing that, unfortunately, there was no way that I was going to be able to do what he was asking. But he wanted the American dream for his children. And he knew what America stood for. 
in my opinion, our fighting men and women are doing the heavy lifting of foreign policy so that someday they can come home and return to a civilian life and enjoy the blessings of life and liberty that they have sacrificed to protect. But it bothers me to say that those who return home today, some of them see a very different picture. They see an America that's torn by bitter partisan differences that have much more to do with who can score political points than dedicated Americans pulling together for the common good. Could it be that because we don't have a clear notion anymore of who the enemy really is, that we've turned on our own neighbors trying to pretend that somehow they are the enemy? You know, I may think that additional government spending two years ago helped keep us from falling into another Great Depression. You may think that too much spending is just a slippery slope that will lead us to an even greater economic problem in the future. Well, you know, both of those are good, solid arguments and reasonable positions, and they should be debated and discussed. Only the perspective of history is going to tell us which ideas were right and which were wrong. Holding a different opinion, though, doesn't make us enemies. Hopefully, we all want what's best for our country. We just have some different ideas about how to get there. But what do our returning service men and women see when they come home? Too often, they see bitterness and anger over the results of the most recent elections, irrational voices in the media and elsewhere calling for the destruction of elected officials and everything that they were elected to do. How can our returning veterans help but be confused over what they fought for. So I say that we, all of us here, have a mission. No, no, I guess it's stronger than that. I think we have a duty, maybe a sacred obligation, to show the young men and women who fought for our country that they did the right thing, that they were in the right. We have an obligation to let them see clearly that we are all Americans, that we're working together for a common good, and not just a bunch of angry street gangs fighting over our little pieces of turf. To those who are at the extreme ends of the political debate, on both ends, I would like to say, enough. Let's start to meet in the middle where decent and civil dif discourse can occur. Let's show our veterans that the America that they fought and bled for is still the land of the free and the home of the brave and still the world's greatest experiment in democracy, and that it stands for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's make that our task in the coming months and years. We owe it to our veterans. We owe it to ourselves. Thank you for sharing this time with me and with each other. And I would ask you to God bless our fighting men and women and God bless the United States of America.